Hey everyone, this is Nick, and today we're going to talk about Linux fragmentation. That's something that is often leveled against Linux as a criticism. The Linux desktop is too fragmented, there are too many choices, developers keep reinventing the wheel and duplicating efforts, it makes applications less professional and less ready, it makes Linux stagnate, it makes it not ready for the mass market. Even Linus Torvalds expressed this opinion. Fragmentation is what is holding the Linux desktop back. Well, sorry Linus, but I disagree. Fragmentation, in my opinion, is what made the Linux desktop much, much better than it would have been otherwise. Just like this segue to today's sponsor is much, much better than the ones that came before it. Linode is an amazing way to get your Linux server up and running. They've been voted top provider for infrastructure as a service by G2 and Trustradius, and they offer tons of one-click deployable servers. For example, Owncast, letting you run your own Twitch-like streaming server with video broadcast and chat capabilities. Or Apache Guacamole, which is the easiest way to get your own fully featured Linux desktop in the cloud, accessible from anywhere in the world. If you prefer gaming, you can also start your own Valheim server on Linode, and they also have one-click servers available for CSGO, Rust, Arc, or Minecraft, among others. Now on top of that, Linode is currently upgrading all their data centers with faster NVMe block storage, which means that every server that you currently have with them or that you plan to open with them will have access to that faster storage at no extra cost for you, which is pretty freaking amazing. Now I personally run my own Nextcloud instance and only Office document server, both on Linode, and I couldn't be more satisfied, I can only recommend them. So if you want to give them a shot and get started, click the link in the description below and you will get a free $100 credit to start your own Linux server. Okay, so what do we mean when we say that Linux is fragmented? And there are two different meanings, really. The first one being one that is shared by Android. It's fragmentation as in many different targets for software developers, many different distros, many different Android versions and skins that make it difficult for developers to make good software that supports everything. And in that specific meaning of the word, then no, Linux is not fragmented, not anymore. And I'll tell you why in a few moments. The second meaning of fragmentation is that we have too many small projects that work on trying to make the same thing. Too many desktop environments, too many packaging formats, too many office suites, too many terminal emulators, too many distributions. Too many different cars, too many different kinds of shirts, you see where I'm going with this? Generally, when people say that Linux is fragmented, what they mean is that developers are wasting their time and their efforts making too many different things that have the same goal. And in that sense, then yes, Linux is fragmented, but I disagree that it's a bad thing. Let's see why. But first, let's see why Linux is not fragmented in terms of developer support and application development. This might have been true once, many different packaging formats, many different distributions, and the way they shipped shared system libraries, which ones they had, which ones they didn't have, the necessity to package for multiple releases of the same distro, it was all a nightmare. Basically, as a developer, you made an RPM that worked for Red Hat and stopped at that. And then Ubuntu got popular and you made a deb for Ubuntu and stopped at that. Nowadays, this isn't the case at all. We now have plenty of packaging formats that work across all distributions, with one single package per architecture. You don't target Ubuntu version 22.04 for 64-bit x86 CPUs. You target Linux for x86 CPUs, period. Flatpak, Snap, App Images, they all allow you to just make one package that runs on all versions of all distros that share an architecture. But Nick, that's still fragmentation. There's three different packaging formats that developers have to support. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Nick, with an annoying voice that is utterly wrong. No, developers don't have to support snaps and flat packs and app images. They just have to pick one of these. All of them can run on all distros. If you make a flat pack, Ubuntu can run it. If you make a snap, Fedora can run it. If you make an app image, Gentoo can run it. And graphical app stores make this even more transparent for users. From GNOME software or Discover, you can install regular old packages, flat packs and snaps and most users won't even notice which packaging format was used and won't care. Only us giant nerds will fight about Flatpak is more secure, snaps are bad, app images are better, or the AUR is best. No one that is not a nerd cares about that. You package once, you distribute everywhere, it's a one-click install for users. Fragmentation is fixed. Well, not really, because fragmentation still also means duplication of efforts and the waste of developer time that this supposedly entails. 
except that here again, it's a generalization that really doesn't apply. Sure, Linux has plenty of duplicate projects, if you use that word to its loosest sense. Gnome is a duplication of KDE. Pantheon is a duplication of Gnome. Krita is a duplication of GIMP. Shotcut duplicates the work that Kdenlive is doing. Hell, Fedora Silverblue duplicates Fedora Workstation. Arch duplicates Linux from scratch. And now I'm sure that pretty much everybody watching this video is disagreeing with what I just said. These projects are not duplicates of one another. What people call fragmentation, I call meaningful choice. The fact that developers work on projects that have the same aim, but not the same way to reach their goal, is not a bad thing. Gnome and KDE and Pantheon and XFCE all want to make a graphical desktop that's easy to use, that has good defaults, good programs, and that anyone can pick up and use. They all manage to do that, but in very different ways. Is that a bad thing? Is having that kind of choice bad? Of course not. I don't think anyone that's rational and not a complete hater would say that KDE is a waste of time and that all KDE devs should go work on GNOME to make it better and faster. It wouldn't make any sense. And even if it did, do you really think that developers that chose to work on KDE would move on to GNOME and conform to the project's goals and agree to not implement every option they want? Do you think GNOME developers would be fine with working on KDE and not being able to shape the desktop in a specific way? If you think that, then you're even crazier than me. And I'm pretty nuts. Am I not that? Ooh, you sure are, son. Thanks, daddy. I'm sure glad that desktop icons didn't kill you after all. Developers working on open source projects that have the same goal aren't wasting their time because if they didn't work on their own project, they also wouldn't work on the competing one. Because if they shared goals, there wouldn't be two projects in the first place. I talked at length about this specific topic in a previous video. Check it out in the card up top if you're interested. But fragmentation also hurts Linux adoption in the mass market, or so I hear. That's kind of true, but it's also the wrong way to look at the problem. First, I would argue that fragmentation isn't what makes Linux not exist in the minds of the general public when they want to buy a computer. In my opinion, it's the lack of buyable computers running Linux that has hurt the purchase of computers running Linux. Crazy notion, I know. But still, having too many choices can be pretty complex for newcomers to navigate. They have to understand the difference between distributions, desktop environments, and then actually decide what they would like to try, and manage to try it, and then decide if they want to keep using it. It's all pretty difficult. There is such a thing as too much choice. But the solution isn't to reduce choice, it's to make it more legible. People can currently choose between hundreds of smartphone models, thousands of computers, hundreds of cars, of clothing items, of sneakers, of sunglasses models, they still manage to make a choice in the end. And if they need help, they go to various websites to compare, read reviews and decide. Our problem isn't that we have too many choices, is that we have no good way of helping users decide between these choices. Because Linux and operating systems aren't as familiar a choice to people as picking between different cars. What we need isn't fewer choices, it's better entry points to let users make those choices. I will also conclude by saying that what people perceive as fragmentation on Linux is actually a big strength of the Linux desktop. Because we have so many choices, so many options, so many projects, we have competition. And competition brings innovation and makes new ideas pop up way faster. The Linux desktop space is incredibly diverse in terms of what it offers, the workflows, the way to manage your computer, the solidity of the base, the ergonomics of the graphical desktop, the install experience. All of this diversity isn't possible if you remove the ability to be fragmented. If you follow a traditional software model, like what Apple does on macOS, or what Microsoft does on Windows, or even Google with Chrome OS, you simply can't get that level of diversity. Our desktops evolve at a much, much speedier rate than any competing proprietary offer. They have better features, faster, they get revamps, they get UX tests and tryouts, they get new applications all the time. This is not possible if you don't have fragmentation. Because fragmentation breeds competition and competition brings better software for everyone. So yeah, in my opinion, fragmentation isn't a problem for Linux. We have ways to distribute software super easily to any distro. And having multiple projects tackling the same problems isn't an issue, it's a strength. So next time someone says that fragmentation is hurting Linux, point them towards this video. And probably let them write an angry comment because they disagree. 
But what no one can disagree on is today's sponsor, Slimbook. Slimbook makes desktops and laptops running Linux. They're based in Valencia, Spain. And in this video, they're gonna let you get 150 euros off your own Ultrabook, the Slimbook Executive. Use the offer code in the link below to get your own at that nice discount. It's a fantastic Ultrabook with a great magnesium chassis, awesome trackpad and keyboard, great screen, good internals. It's really, really a good choice. And at that price, it's kind of unbeatable. So check the link in the description below if you're interested. Now, thank you everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, write a comment. And if you didn't, you can dislike and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you want to help me make more of these videos, you can also join my Patreon subscribers and my YouTube members. Both get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!